In this video, we're going to look at wave basics using an oscilloscope. Um, I'm going to be using the Vernier Power Amplifier Program as a frequency generator to generate a frequency, in this case, a sine wave um, at 200 hertz. So I've changed the setting from 20 to 200 uh, just by typing in there. I'm going to just put a note, make that 2000, I haven't, and then hit enter. So there's 200 hertz that are going out. Uh, there's different types of waves. There's a triangle wave, which is square wave, um, and we might look at those later. Uh, down here is where you can change the amplitude. We'll look at that in a little bit. To connect the output from the frequency generator, the power amplifier, to the oscilloscope, we've got to use a couple steps. First, we have to take the signal from the sound card. So I got an audio cable connected to the back of the power amplifier in the audio in. And I've got the power plugged in. So there's a, the, the power brick from Vernier gets plugged into the, to the standard outlet. And that gets connected right here. And in the front, I've got a alligator clip to B and C going into the oscilloscope. And again, connecting this in here. So B and C, there's a little slot and there's a little nub there. You got to figure out, I just basically just turn this here until I feel it go over, push in and then turn. And that gets you a pretty good um, setup. I uh, can't hear anything because I don't have the speaker plugged in. So the speakers usually have a plus minus on them uh, on, the, on the connection locations. I just took an alligator clip, uh, try to keep the polarity. Plus goes with plus and minus goes with minus. So and I got to make sure I get those things connected. I think I'm going to connect it here instead rather than using that. So I connected it up above. It's really careful. There's little holes. You can kind of get those in there if you get lucky. But inside there's a little hole. There's a little port. You've got to get the alligator clip in far enough to get the piece of metal rather than the plastic. So now I've got a good connection. Uh, I can hear the sound, but I can't really see it very well. Um, if I know the value 200, I can change these so my volts Per division would correspond, so it's two volts peak to peak here. And right now it's set at 100 millivolts. That's not very good. And for the period 100, ah, I'm just going to hit this auto button. Let the oscilloscope do its magic and cross fingers that it decides on a good setting. And ooh, that's a pretty good setting. So now when I look at what it did for me, 500 millivolts per division. The voltage is your vertical. So I can change that to one volt per division. The Vernier program was outputting two volts peak to peak, one volt per division. So if I look the way this is set up, my zero is pretty close to zero here. Let's see, where is it at? Now it's at zero. So I can move this dial here to make sure I've got this zero. So there's position zero. That's the middle of the wave. And here's the bottom crest, crest, trough, trough. The time from crest to crest or trough to trough um, is known as a period. Um, it's also a wavelength. Now, this is the way I set the time. On this, time is the X axis. So we're really not measuring length in a sense, when we're looking at the wavelength, <laughs> the wavelength is going to correspond to the period because that's what's on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, we've got voltage. One volt per division, so if I look, one, two divisions. So that would be two volts. One volt per division, two divisions, multiply that together, there you go. You get two volts. Now I'm going to change this to 500 millivolts and one, two, three, it's almost about four. Not exactly. The program says it's two volts peak to peak. This is telling me it's not. That Vernier program is lying. It's close enough for all, for all practical purposes. If I wanted a frequency generator, I would spend the $200 or use the free one. And the free one is good enough. Um, so um, that's looking at the voltage. Now, if I want to get a closer look, get those numbers exactly, I'm going over here to cursors. And I'm going to turn my cursors on. And I'm going to go with, click this button and go manual. Click, oh, missed. Man, track, manual, manual. 
frustrating. And I want to look at the vertical one. So I'm going to click this here, change that to vertical. Right now I'm at cursor A and, oops, wrong button. Move that back to zero. Moved it back to zero in case I messed up. There comes cursor A. I want to try to stick that here near the top. And it looks like it's about 900 millivolts. And I'm going to click. So it moves down to cursor B. Move that back up to about here. And that's pretty close. So actually, from zero to 900 millivolts, zero to negative 900, if I add that together, that's 1800 millivolts or 1.8 volts. So one of your assignments is to change the voltage, which I'm going to do over here. I'm gonna change this, and I'm gonna listen here carefully. I'm gonna change this to three. Listen, listen. Did you see it got louder? The oscilloscope, the amplitude got bigger. It got a little louder. I'm gonna change this to four. I'm not, I haven't hit enter yet because I wanna look at the oscilloscope and listen. Notice it got louder and it also peaked to peak. So I'm gonna do this again. So you're gonna pick, pick some random uh, voltage and take an image of your cursor. So I'm gonna move my cursors now. And this is supposed to be four. Move that down. And somewhere around there. There's good. Click, click. I gotta go all, there we go. Cursor A, move that up to the top. Hmm, not quite symmetrical, that's weird. Okay, so we've got, now my voltage is not quite four. Mm. Looks like it's 1.8 plus 1.75 or 3.55. So that's somewhat of an error. I have to look into that, but it really doesn't matter. And I can look at this value down here and see how close I really got. So 3.5, 3.60, if I look really carefully. So in one of the menu options, I should be able to click around and look for VPP, volts peak to peak, there it is. And I've already got it clicked, so if you hit this, it would show up down here. So I could have read that from right there rather than looking at the cursors. Sometimes the cursors work better, sometimes it's just easier to use these on the side. So have both set up so you can see the peak to peak, try to do a calculation estimating where these are gonna be. Because um, it's hard for me to know where the actual top of the amplitude signal is because of the intensity and so forth. Um, a lot of cases not, not set up for that. Um, all right, so there's looking at amplitude corresponds to loudness or the energy in the wave. The bigger the voltage, the bigger the amplitude. You know, this is given peak to peak, which is that distance here. And I can use the cursors or these menu options to determine that peak to peak voltage. Uh, item two is looking at the frequency value itself. How do I calculate frequency on here? Oh, duh, I'm going over here and I'll do, I'll click on frequency and let it do it for me down here. Or I could look at period, period, there it is, just uh, click on period and it does it for me right there. Period five milliseconds, frequency is the inverse of period, so one divided by point oh, Oh, 05, wow, uh, would be 200. I wanna do this manually. So if I look at the, the divisions, one millisecond per division. So I'm gonna go from this bottom peak and I don't like the way it's at. I'm gonna move it a little bit, but notice when I move it, I'm also gonna move the zero spot by over here, 180 microseconds. So I'm gonna try to find the bottom there and to the bottom there. And I'm gonna use my cursors again. I'm gonna change my cursor types, go to the vertical ones, because now I'm gonna move this one over right there, and then hit cursor A. Come on, cursor A. Cursor A right there, hot diggity dog. So one, two, three, four, five 
divisions, one millisecond per division, that's five milliseconds. Oh, duh, there it is right there under period. How about that? Um, if I use my cursor values, I got 3.78, uh, I could cheat and just change it. This looks like I didn't do so good with my cursors. I think I should have moved this one, I left a little bit. Uh, 1.2 plus 3.78 is not quite five. That's gonna be 4.98. Uh, That's pretty close. Um, these manual cursors are sometimes very useful um, to get ballparks. A lot of cases you can use these side menus to get more, more precise values. Uh, but you should know how to do both, S setting up the cursors and so forth. I could change my um, period over here also. So now I don't have a full wave, I only have half a wave. And I'm gonna go this way, so now back to there. So now, now I'm at uh, two milliseconds per division. So I'm gonna move this over. Oops, I want to move the wave over. So I'm hitting this one. So that the bottom here, <coughs> excuse me, one, two, and a half at two milliseconds per division, two and a half times two would be five. So I really haven't um, changed the wave, but I've changed the way I can calculate it and see more of it by um, increasing this, um, by changing the, the, the time function, which is the time per division. So now it's two milliseconds for every division. And um, that's a way to calculate period and frequency using the menu bo buttons along with using the cursors. Um, if I use this cursor now, I could also do it this way. Um, move, leave this at zero. Let's see, I wanna move the, the main button at zero. Let's put it back to zero. That's at zero, that's the middle spot of the wave. And I could go to this top piece and then to there. And I can use the time rather than having to count and so forth with divisions. There's that spot, there's that spot. 1.2, 3.76, so I get pretty close to the same answer. There's gonna be 4.96. So I'm not very good with these cursors. You might have better eyesight than me. Um, I have a tendency to use whichever is more, you know, sometimes you can't use these functions. You don't have enough of the wave. Or you're trying to do something with the cursors that none of these will give you answers. All right, so in your assignment, you should be able to generate a wave at random. So like, for instance, possibly 450. One, because you're reading that book. There's the tone, so you can kind of hear how it's louder. Go to your oscilloscope screen. You can hit auto if you want, or you know, change the values so that you can do some measurements on them. Uh, I'm gonna do a manual change so I can do this. I'd like you to calculate the peak to peak using the cursors um, by moving the cursors over. Uh, I'm gonna turn the sound off. I'm gonna turn the sound off, simple. I unplugged it. Oh, I unplugged this the oscilloscope too. No, no, no. Okay, I'll plug the oscilloscope back in. Okay, so um, go ahead and move the cursors over to get the peak to peak. Compare your answer to what uh, Vernier gets. Um, move the vertical cursors to figure out the frequency and the period and compare that. So I think I wrote in 451 and here it's calculating 450. Uh, the inverse of 450 should be 2.2. So that's not too bad. Let's do a quick look at some of the other tones. And I'm going to plug in the speaker again so I can hear it uh, real quick just for fun and chuckles. And that's not plugged in. What happened to my other side? The negative, negative, negative. Oh, I connected the negative back to the negative. If I go to the triangle wave, that's not a very good triangle wave. That's pathetic. I've, um, 
Square wave. Ah! Too loud. Too loud? No problem. I'll turn down the amplitude. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to increase the frequency. See if it gets any better. Ooh, it's loud. That's high. Let's tame that down to one. Okay, so square wave. This is a pathetic square wave also. I'm going to turn the sound off. It's annoying. Uh, these should be flat. <laughs> Not the no noise. It should be on, off, on, off, on, off. So um, this is a power amplifier program. It's free, but it's not very good at producing really good waves. The sine wave works really well. Cause that, that looks, that looks awesome. That's, that's thumbs up. And that's what we really want for this anyway. All right. Well, that's it. I hope this is useful and you learned a little bit about wave basics and how to use an oscilloscope to determine frequency and, and, um, frequency period and amplitude for a wave. You'll need this information because in the next lab, you're using trying to figure out the frequency of this tuning fork. Look, there it is, 288, and it's a D. Between that and a microphone. So you're gonna have a microphone picking up the sound wave, and you're gonna see how close you get with the oscilloscope. All right, that's it for now. See you next time, bye.